Well, hello there, how is everyone? I hope you are all well. And this is video two of two. You know the drill. I'm gonna get straight into the meat and potatoes because I'm conscious it's Monday, you guys have probably got stuff to do. You don't wanna be lingering around. So we're gonna be talking about, very briefly, Brian Koberger specifically, and the specific argument of innocent versus guilty. Okay? And what I'm gonna to say to that is this. We have got into a situation already, pre-trial, where people either have him convicted or have him innocent. 100% as well. This isn't pe There are people who are on the fence. There are 100% people who are on the fence. I've always considered personally that Brian Koberg was connected somehow, but my issue is, is believing that he'd done it completely on his own. Uh, I just felt that for this crime to have happened in this manner and get away... Yeah, there was a massive issue with the knife sheath potentially being left behind, but if you take that away, if you take that one element away, there is no case. The one thing that connected could have potentially be an accident. And we're going to put a pin in that because that specific point is exactly what I want to bring up later in this video. But the point being, the point being is that we have a situation where people either have him 100% pinned or 100% not pinned. And I want people to understand that you can't be shocked if this goes either way. So if you are 100% that he is guilty, then you can't be shocked or surprised if he is found not guilty. And as equally, if you 100% have him not guilty and believe that this was a setup, this was... You know, he was he was framed. Even me, I you know that I believe that someone did it with him, or he did it, orchestrated something. If that turns out to be wrong, we can't be shocked either. We can't be shocked. And why is that? It's because we do not know anything. On the grander scheme of things, we feel we feel that we have a lot of information. And we feel like that because of channels like mine, who I come out and I speak about this case every day, and there's the multiple channels that are covering it as well. And it gives people a, an illusion that there is so much information, when in fact we've got little pieces of information that have been, the word for the day is fragmented, or fragmentation, fragments you know, broken down into smaller bite-sized chunks. Now, the reason I do that is because I appreciate where people, if you give them a load of information, lots and lots of things across these long, drawn-out videos, things get lost in translation. Whereas if you just do it and get to the point and uh, and make it so it's your video is short and, and specifically focusing on a point, like video one today where we talk specifically about and it literally took minutes about the wi-fi situation with brian koberger and potentially connecting to wi-fi at 1122 king road if people are given that information in amongst an abundance of other stuff then things get lost and that's what's happened in this case things have got lost and there is information still floating around out there that people still feel are accurate pieces of information and that is applicable to both sides of the argument like we don't know that or, or we have heard that there is no connection between the students the victims and the the accused we there isn't and we've seen documentation where Ann Taylor has stipulated that there is no link. You've provided no link between my client and the victims. So from our perspective as people who think there might be a little bit more to that, that's like an ace in a hole for us because we will turn around and say, well, there's no connection. They've shown no connection. The flip side of that coin is if they have something else that renders that piece of information pointless we don't need to show a connection prior to the crime we just need to prove that he did it doesn't need to be a connection he could have just randomly this night walked into any house the fact of the matter is is this could have been completely completely random there could have been no rhyme no reason there could, it could have literally been a, a shot in the dark 
just went there and went into a house and it could have been any house and anybody in it and it just happened to be this house and the rest is history and that could be the case we seem to always want motive, we want the connection, we want to know what happened in the lead up to it, and that's our curious and inquisitive minds. And that won't ever change, but the reality is, there just might not be one. He might have been so good at covering his tracks that there is no link. He might have been watching from afar. So the point being, we can't be surprised if this case goes one way or the other. But what we need to hope happens is in the event of an outcome, that that outcome is shown to be the right outcome. So I think there might, may come a time when people have to dump a lot of what they think they know. The recordings they've seen, the audio they've heard, and, and the, the relevance that they've given it into this situation, when the reality is it just may not have any relevance. And what should remain important and at the forefront of your mind is that we have four victims and we have an accused and we have the people around their peripherals. And it's very important that this system and this process works to protect them all. That if Brian didn't do this, that he is protected and this system enables him to show and prove that he did not do this crime. And in the event that he did, and that he is found guilty, shown that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and there is indeed justice that prevails at the end. But I just want to say, don't be shocked, whatever the outcome, because if you take truly into consideration what we know, not what's been convoluted and embellished and conjecture and speculation, but what we truly know, we know very little. Yes, we have all these fantastic and fantastical stories. But step back and look in for a second. And what do we really know? Let me know down below. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. And I'll catch you all tomorrow. <laughs>